This is Ryan. And I'm John. Welcome to Preview Season. Oath of the Gatewatch. All right. Reckless Bushwhacker is going to be our first card up here. Woo! Worth noting, he says, other creatures you control. So even though you hit the surge easier uh, when you're playing in a two-headed giant game, it won't actually benefit your teammates' creatures, just yours. So this is a really great Goblin Bushwhacker throwback. Goblin Bushwhacker in original Zendikar, Pauper All-Star. And this card, it's... I'm really excited about it. It seems really good. Um, it's not very hard to uh, get what... Oh, man. What's the... What's the One in a red for the surge. Okay, so it's a surge ability. Yeah. doesn't seem too hard to get that surge ability off, especially in the existing Atarka red decks. You just play a one-drop with haste, of which the deck has plenty, and then you just... Throw down a Reckless Bushwhacker for Surge and get in a lot of damage. You've got Dragon Fodder. You've got stuff like Hordling Outburst. This card just seems really great. All right, so the next card we got here is Jory N, Ruin Diver. So legendary creatures always bring up the discussion of Commander or EDH. Uh, red and blue already have some good uh, options in this color pair here, but I could see building a fun deck around the casting lots of cheap spells and drawing more cards motif. Sure. Yeah, this seems fine and constructed as a, a weird, a little slightly worse version of Monastery Mentor that fuels itself by giving you, letting you draw more cards, which equal more spells to draw more cards and just kind of is a self-sustaining engine. It kind of keeps itself going. That is the upside to its upfront cost of being just a 2-3 three for 3 mana. Yeah, and speaking of keeping it going, how about comparative analysis, right? Target player means you can feed your teammate cards into Head of Giant if needed, so give them that old-school alley-oop like the 96 Chicago Bulls. So I'm really excited about this card because Inspiration was pretty great in Return to Ravnica Limited. It obviously wasn't a bomb, but it was a card you always wanted your deck to have, and this is inspiration but with the upside of being able to play multiple spells in a turn and getting it a little cheaper i'm super excited that a card like this is back in limited sure how about crumbling vestige now i think this is going to be a real test of experience knowing when to hold that land for the mana of any color versus running it out there and quote unquote wasting the mana just to advance <laughs> your land count see what i did there nailed it uh you know it's gonna be a real test to see how well you know the format understand your deck and the requirements and colors and things like that what do you think John? yeah it creates some interesting land sequencing situations for sure uh colorless mana is kind of looking to be an important and scarce resource in oath of the gatewatch limit and what you can do is you can kind of read Crumbling Vestige as a land that comes into play untapped, but on the first turn, it taps for a color, hmm. and then on the other turns, it just taps for colorless. So that's that's a way to look at it if it makes it easier for you. Sure. So let's wrap it up with Spatial Contortion. This looks Ooh. like a good removal and or pump spell. Yeah, right? now everybody gets Nameless Inversion. Yeah, and I personally think this is going to pair great. If you can snag a copy of Benthic Infiltrator, you've got an unblockable damage out of nowhere that can just close out the game for four points if you need it. Yeah, that sounds actually pretty awesome. This is going to be a high pick for pretty much every deck. It doesn't get you into a color right away, um, and it's just a removal spell that any color can play. Yeah, so there you go. Another great batch of preview cards. We'll keep it coming all week long. See us in our next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye.